If you are an anesthesiologist, physician and working in interventional neuroradiology, this video will be useful for you for making some renew of knowledge in this domain. And this one is called anesthetic considerations for interventional neuroradiology. Let us be familiar with anesthesia concerns. As to know anesthesia technical support being provided at a distance from the operating theater. Other potential problems include working in reduced light, poor access to the uh, patient and concerns of ionizing radiation. Anesthetic consideration when providing anesthesia to patients undergoing interventional neuroradiology or INR uh, procedures includes maintenance of patient's immobility and physiological stability, manipulating systemic uh, and regional blood flow to the brain especially, managing anticoagulation and treating sudden and unexpected complications during the procedure, the medical management of critical, critically ill patients during transport to and from radiology suites, and smooth and rapid recovery from anesthesia to facilitate neurological examination is equally important. Pre-assessment of patients, so detailed patient evaluation and understanding of the underlying neuropathology are essential. In addition to the normal pre-anesthetic evaluation, a patient undergoing a neuroradiology procedure requires a careful neurological examination to identify any neurological deficits if they are present with uh, special attention to Glasgow Coma Scale or SCORE. Baseline arterial pressure and cardiovascular res reserve should be evaluated, as should uh, renal insufficiency. As anticoagulation is employed during uh, most procedures, evaluation of coagulation is important. I also mention if patient uh, was previously exposed to angiography, protamine allergy, contrast reaction. Iodine and uh, shellfish allergies are particularly important. It should be also be borne in mind that arthritis of neck, back, or other joints will influence the patient's ability to lay in a supine position and the potential for airway compromise with sedation. Patients should continue to take their usual prescribed medication and to know that uh, premedication, sedative premedication should be avoided. One of the modalities is uh, preferred uh, for patients in uh, neuroanesthesia and especially in uh, interventional neuroradiology is general anesthesia. It is preferred as opposed to sedation for optimal imaging, as this provides any mobile patient with improved quality of images. Patient comfort and better control of the respiratory and hemodynamic profile. The disadvantages of, of general anesthesia are the inability to perform neurological assessment intraoperatively and the consequences of endotracheal intubation and extubation that produces different uh, reaction like of the body like hypertension, coughing, straining, which can lead to rising to raised intracranial pressure. With most anesthetic agents like propofol, desflurane and sevoflurane, anesthesia can be rapidly induced with minimum hemodynamic changes and depths rapidly uh, controlled and a smooth and rapid emergence obtained or a, a rapid sequence anesthesia. A recent study comparing the speed of recovery after maintenance of anesthesia for neuroradiology with sevoflurane or propofol found that sevoflurane was associated with more rapid recovery. Nitrous oxide is preferably avoided as there is a risk of enlargement of micro air bubbles during injection of contrast or irrigation fluid. Also, laryngeal mask airway may be used as an alternative to the tracheal intubation. 
it allows uh, airway control and less hemodynamic stress. Another option is sedation. It is important that for safe sedation, the operator should operator uh, should not be responsible for sedation. Sedation with propofol is widely used, and with uh, midazolam as well. Dexmedetomidine has been used for sedation. Patient, as patients with uh, dexmedetomidine are arousable and cooperative when stimulated. A lack of so a respiratory depressant effect is another, another advantage. It has been used in patients undergoing a weak craniotomy in which uh, neuropsychological uh, testing well, was described. And in endovascular embolization of the AVM or arteriovenous malformations. The benefits of sedation are that it is easier to perform neurological testing repeatedly and the avoidance of hemodynamic changes associated with intubation and emergence. The disadvantages are an unprotected airway with the risk of aspiration and the potential for hypoxemia and uh, hypercarbia if used inappropriately or deep sedation close to anesthesia, general anesthesia. Sudden patient movement and delays in managing a neurological emergency may also occur and are considered disadvantages. Conduct of anesthesia. The anesthetic machine is best located opposite to the neuroradiologist or toward, towards the patient's feet. This position keeps it out of the way and imaging uh, equipment can move freely around the patient's head. Patient positioning is especially important if the procedure is to be performed under monitored anesthesia care or conscious sedation. Securing uh, IV or intravenous access uh, should be available to a low drug and fluid administration at maximal distance from the image intensifier during fluoroscopy or the tube where the, most of the radiation is concentrated. Infusion of drugs such as anticoagulants or remifentanil or sedation should be given through a separate cannula or line. Standard monitoring is required regardless of anesthetic technique. For intracranial procedures and postoperative care, an arterial line can facilitate pressure monitoring and blood sampling for acid base equilibrium. Deliberate uh, hypertension for occlusion and vasospasm or hypotension to slow blood flow in the feeding artery of the AVM or arteriovenous malformation before glue injection may be required during interventional procedures. There should be sufficient slack in all monitors lines, IV lines and airway connection as the patient table may need to move back and forth during imaging and coiling. So make possible uh, this reserve of the tubes and lines, and especially IV lines with ex extension of the, uh, extension for introducing drugs. Catheterization of the bladder is required for most procedures. This assists in fluid management and aid patient comfort. A significant volume of hypernized flush uh, solution and radiographic contrast is often used. An administration of diuretics such as mannitol and furosemine may be required intraoperatively. Another point is represented by hypothermia, as it can occur in the neuroradiology suites. Pas uh, suite patients' body temperature should be kept near normal or core temperature measured for maintaining it. Anticoagulation for neurointerventional radiology. Careful management of coagulation is required to prevent thromboembolic complications during and after the procedure. In general, after a baseline activated uh, clotting time or ACT is obtained, intravenous heparin is given to prolong ACT uh, two to three times. For example, if patient has 70 and we are increasing by three times, it will be 210 seconds. 
NCT is monitored at least every hour, and if required, additional dose of heparin, uh, additional dose of heparin is given. A heparin infusion may be continued after the procedure to protect against both thrombogenic effects of endocellular trauma and the inherently thrombogenic nature of the materials, materials instilled. The sustained reduction in morbidity and mortality by antiplatelet agents uh, has led to interest of, in their use for endovascular procedures of the central nervous system, of course. How about complications? Complications during interventional neuroradiology can be rapid and catastrophic. And there should be good communication between neuroradiologist, anesthetist, and the radiographer for the prompt management of complications that can occur. Complications for an in interventional neuroradiology procedure could be hemorrhagic from aneurysm, perforation, intracranial vessel injury, or dissection, occlusive from thromboembolic complications, displacement of coil into parent vessel, coil fracture or vasospasm, and non-central nervous system complications like contrast reactions, contrast nephropathy, and hemorrhage at the puncture site, like groin hematoma or retroperitoneal hematoma. Hemorrhagic events occurs uh, if occurs any of the hemorrhagic ev events, you can immediately reverse uh, with heparin, and the dosage will be one milligram of protamine sulfate to each 100 units of heparin. For example, if you gave uh, five uh, thousands of heparin, you'll give 50 milligram of protamine sulfate to reverse anticoagulation effect. In and also, if uh, hemorrhage is too, uh, too much or more than 25 milliliter, you can uh, readdress patient for emergency craniotomy and ventricular drainage. Occlusive complications. Blood pressure uh, should be raised to increase collateral blood flow. Thrombolysis can be applied. And another important part is treatment of vasospasm with uh, known triple therapy like hypertension, hypervolemia, and hemodilution, and pharmacologically uh, papaverin or by angioplasty. Heparin, uh, sorry, papaverin has shown clinical improvement in 25 to 50% of patients. Contrast reactions, so pretreatment with steroids and antihistamines shown diminished the uh, reaction appearance in many patients wh which are suspected or uh, has had previously. Contrast nephropathy reactions uh, can be caused by hyper uh, by hyper uh, tonicity, direct cardiac depression and idiosyncratic anaphylactoid reactions. For patients with a previous uh, reaction to contrast, pretreatment is admissible. And isotonic pre uh, bicarbonate infusion by alkyl alkyl alkalinizing renal tubular fluids and thereby minimi minimizing tubular damage. And of course, uh, administration of crystalloids or solution, a physiological solution of sodium chlor, 0.9 percent, uh, preoperatively is beneficial. And the last line is postoperative care. All patients who undergo interventional procedures should be cared for a high dependency unit unless their neurological condition dictates admission to intensive care. Maintenance of modest, hypo, modest hypotension is required post arteriovenous malformation embolization to prevent cerebral edema and hemorrhage. And the mean arterial pressure should be kept uh, 15 to 20 percent below uh, the baseline for 24 hours. For uh, also you can administer nimodipine or uh, nemotan or something like that or calcium channel blocker, peripheral usually. And for occlusive uh, 
occlusive conditions, uh, mean arterial uh, blood pressure should be uh, or may be required to be above 20 to 30 percent for uh, maintaining cerebral perfusion pressure. This can be achieved with uh, norepinephrine and not not as usual with phenylephrine, which was used previously and demonstrated some spares. Most patients receive aspirin 75 mg for three months for uh, patients with subarachnoid uh, hemorrhage. Postoperative nausea and vomiting can be a problem due to contrast, contrast and anesthetic agents. Use it during the procedure. Maintenance of hydration is important as there can be allergic osmotic diuresis due to hypo, hyperosmolar contrast used during the procedure. And post-procedure ischemia and swelling from contrast can be symptomatic after procedures performed in, in the posterior fossa. So continuous neurological observation should be made to identify any new neurological deficits and appropriate intervention undertaken. So give patient a uh, pre-intervention uh, solution by intravenous road and uh, during the procedure or peri-procedural. And if you are giving too much of the, of the fluids, you can give also diuretics to flush it out. Thank you very much and have a good time.